and we'll speak a little bit about uh, Srimati Radha Rani. Uh, again, Srimati Radha Rani, her pastimes are very, very, very confidential and there are so many things that, that we should be very cautious about when we speak about Srimati Radha Rani. Uh, a little bit about the birth of Srimati Radha Rani or the appearance rather of Srimati Radha Rani. It's very mysterious. Like many times when uh, Mother Lakshmi appears, she doesn't appear like a ordinary child uh, from the womb of a mother. She just appears like Sita Devi. When Sita Devi appeared, did she appear from the womb of a mother? No. no. Yeah. From Earth. Correct. So similarly, Srimati Radharani also. Now Radharani, when she was uh, Vrishabhanu, the father of Radharani, uh, before uh, Radha appeared, he did not. They did not have a child. Kirtida was the mother of uh, Radharani, and one day he goes to the Yamuna to take a dip in Yamuna. And while he is taking a dip, he sees a big lotus flower, a golden lotus flower floating towards him. What would we do if a golden lotus flower comes? We take it immediately, sell it off, correct? <laughs> because we understand the importance of gold. But not Vrishabhanu. He saw this golden lotus floating towards him and he was mesmerized. He said, what, what is this? I've never seen a golden lotus before. And it was a big lotus, you know, bigger than usual. And it was covered. And he, op he goes close to that and he opens the petals of this lotus and he sees a baby, a radiant baby, you know, beautiful baby girl inside that lotus. And... Uh, for a couple who don't have children, you know, for them, uh, just look, looking at, he thought, is this the Lord giving me a blessing? But then he said, no, no, it is not right. It, this child maybe belongs to someone else. So he picked up the child and it cannot be in the water. What if the lotus topples, baby falls? So he just carried the baby, bought her out of the water. And uh, he was looking around for miles and miles. There's nobody there. And then... He was just sitting there waiting that maybe the mother would come, maybe somebody belongs to someone, they may come. But he got an inspiration in his heart that she wants to be with you. So take her home, she is now your daughter. Thankfully those days they did not have so many legal formalities and all that like we have today, papers, this government. So they had, so Vrishabhanu, he took her back to his house, his mansion, palace. So uh, they go back there and Kirtida is also very happy to have her. So beautiful. The baby was so beautiful. <coughs> now, it was wonderful, but there, was, there were also a little mixed feelings because it seemed like there was something wrong with the baby. Because the baby's eyes were clo closed and normally a baby would make noise. Cry. Right? Cry. Because that's the sign of babies. They would make noise, they would cry, they would do so many things, no? Uh, but if a baby is not making noise, then it seems there is something wrong. So, uh, uh, he was holding the baby, but the baby was moving, it was certainly alive. It was showing symptoms of being alive, but not a single sound. No crying, no baby noises, cooing like a baby, nothing. And even eyes are closed. So, they tried, you know, opening the petals of the eyes, nothing. Eyes are closed. They, they were happy, but they also had mixed feelings. So they put the baby in the cradle. And um, festivals happened, they celebrated it, all that happened. They, but they, in their heart, they, they were still a little, you know, feeling something. So one day, Narad Muni himself appears. When Narad Muni himself appears, it's a great celebration because he's a Devarishi. So everybody said Narad Muni himself has appeared and they worshipped him, they washed his feet, they did all of that. And uh, Narad Muni asked, all of you seem happy, but in your heart you also seem a little sad. What happened? So they explained, this is what is going on. Narad Muni says, okay, take me to the baby. So they take Narad Muni to the baby, Narad Muni sees her and immediately realizes who she is. So he says, give me some time, all of you leave the room. Give me some time with her. So they all leave and Narad Muni is now alone with the baby. And the moment Narad Muni sees that nobody is there, he pays his obeisances and he offers prayers. And this Radharani, Adi Lakshmi herself, 
she appears in her form as as uh, Srimati Radharani in her full form as Radharani in all her all her glory, and uh, she tells him that um, please go and tell them. They seem worried. Please tell them that everything will be okay. It's only a matter of time, and everything will be okay. And Radharani gives him some instructions also. And after this particular instructions, there is a very famous prayer. Um, you know, maybe one day we can get that book here. Uh, it's called the Narada Bhakti Sutra. So Narada Muni, he wrote, composed the Narada Bhakti Sutra after getting instructions from Srimati uh, Radharani. A very beautiful set of prayers there. You should also read that. It's called Narada Bhakti Sutra. After he saw Srimati Radharani, he composed this very beautiful prayer. So this, uh, after that he comes back, Srimati Radharani goes back to being the blind and mute baby and he goes, he tells everybody, don't worry, everything will be okay. And they said, okay, Narad Muni says everything will be okay, then everything will be okay. Then Narad Muni goes, goes away. After a few days, the celebration was going on, after a few days, far away um, in Gokul, Nanda Baba and Yashoda, uh, they hear, uh, again, no social media, they have to wait for someone to come and tell them. So they hear that uh, uh, Kirtida and uh, Vrishabhanu, they have a uh, baby girl now, so let's go and meet them. So they carry some gifts and all of that and they go there to meet the new baby girl. Uh, oh, by the way, she did not have a name till then. It was Narad Muni who gives her the name of Radha. Radha comes from the, uh, come, it's, uh, it has its root in the word Aradhana. Aradha, Aradha, Aradhana means worship, right? So the one who does the greatest form of Aradhana is Radha, right? And the opposite of Radha is Aparadha, someone who, who commits offenses, Aparadha, right? So uh, one who never commits any offense is Radha. Right, so being devotees of Radha, we also should not commit any offenses. That should be our goal at least. So, he gives her the name. Naming ceremony happens and they leave. So, uh, Nanda Baba and Yashoda Mai also come and they come along with whom? <laughs> ah, baby hero. He is there. So, the, 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 so he comes. So, um, he's a little elder than uh, Radharani. So, they're all... Uh, Festivities are going on, children are playing just like the children here, you know, running around. Now when children, they can't sit in one place, they all keep roaming around here and there. So even Krishna was like that, he couldn't sit in one place. They said, yeah, she's sleeping there and you know, so baby is sleeping, nobody disturbs the sleeping baby. So she's sleeping there, let's not disturb her, she's in the next room. But Krishna couldn't tolerate. So Krishna went while the elders are not watching, he's going zigzag, zigzag, here, there, here, there, finally enters the room. And he goes and uh, he pulls the cradle and he looks at her like that, right? And the moment he looks at her, she immediately opens her eyes. She immediately opens her eyes and the first word that she utters from her beautiful lips is Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And she says Krishna so many, so beautifully. She is uttering Krishna's name and both Krishna is looking at her and she is looking at Krishna and their eyes meet and they are not able to break that eye contact. Both of them are looking at each other. And uh, looking at this, they are hearing, this is not Krishna's voice, there is somebody else's voice. And they all run into that room and they see for the first time the beautiful eyes of, of Radharani which is like a blossoming lotus, so beautiful. And for the first time she's she's smiling, she's happy, she's laughing, she's giggling only because of Krishna. And because she has understood her purpose, because she did not want to open her eyes, she did not want to open her eyes if she's not going to look at Krishna. This is the purpose of Radharani. This is the purpose of Radharani. Okay? Once uh, in the in the in the United States. You know, there was feminism was something that was uh, that was blossoming those days. So at that particular point, someone asked Shri Prabhupada, "Why does God have to be a male? Why can't it be female?" And Shri Prabhupada said, "God is female because Radharani is God because there is no difference between Krishna and Radha. There is absolutely no difference. So if someone feels that why should God be male? God has to be female." then they can worship Radharani because she is female God. There is no difference between Krishna and Radharani. 
Krishna is Shakti Man and Radharani is Shakti. Correct? So if I take a ball and throw it in the air, will you say I threw the ball? Or will you say my energy threw the ball? It's the same. Right? Me throwing the ball, my energy throwing the ball in the air is the same. So this entire Brahmanda is controlled by Mahalakshmi herself. Mahodari, one of her names is Mahodari, Mah Maha Udara. Udara means womb. She is the mother Jagadamba. She is the mother of the entire cosmos. That is why she is called Mahodari, Mahalakshmi, Jagadamba. And that Adi Lakshmi is Radharani. And the mercy of Radharani, we cannot approach Krishna. We cannot approach him without Radharani. That is why whenever we worship Krishna, Krishna should always be worshipped with Radharani. As a matter of fact, even if you have Krishna at home, Krishna should never be alone. Krishna is always with a cow, right? At least a cow should be there, or Radharani should be there, or Krishna and Balaram should be there. Krishna doesn't like being alone. He is always, always around with his devotees. Correct? So that should be the mood. Anyway, so this was Radharani. And uh, there is this example given by one Sri Vaishnava Acharya about Mahalakshmi and her mood. And he explains, just like when a child goes to school, this is to understand the mood of Radharani and how important she is for us. I'll give you, I'll tell you something else. Um, so this Vaishnava Acharya, he explains that when a child goes to school, and while, um, while the child was playing in the school, he gets into a fight with another child. And both of them, you know, children do this, they get into a fight, boxing fight and all that. And uh, in the fight, he, they fell down, uh, the clothes got dirty and the pocket got torn, all that happened. So, now the child comes back home and the mother says, Yo, what have you done? Your clothes are so dirty and your clothes are torn also. What are... He says, I don't know, I didn't do it. Uh, children do, no, it's never their mistake, it's somebody else's mistake. So it's not my, he beat me and I hit him and then this happened, that happened. And the mother says, now your father is going to come home and he's going to give you nicely. After that, don't tell me. He says, no, but I am uh, what to do. So the mother says, okay, um, you do one thing. You take out the clothes, go take bath, come back, wear fresh clothes and sit down and study now. And uh, she goes immediately to the kitchen and she prepares some very nice dishes. Now the father comes home busy, angry from work and all that. And he's very upset. So she takes very good care of him. She says, you know, why don't you take bath, freshen up. And she dresses very beautifully for him. So he feels very, uh, very nice looking at her. The moment after this busy day, he comes and he looks at her and he feels, okay, you know, so nice to look at her, looking at her smile. She serves him very nicely. And then she gives him very nice dishes to eat. And he's very satisfied. And after that, she says, uh, she calls him. See, whole day he's been studying after coming from school. Uh, hmm, father says, hmm, okay, but uh, you know today some small fight he had, but it was not his mistake. It was that other boy's mistake, and uh, the poor thing he got stuck and all that, you know. And, uh, but it was not at all his mistake. Okay, so the father says, fine. Okay, you you got hurt? No, no, fine. Okay. Now something that the father would have got really angry about, the mother was able to pacify him. So, why does Mahalakshmi always massage the feet of Narayana for us? Because she is always trying to please Narayana. Because she is trying, she is our advocate. Because we are so useless, how will we ever approach Narayana? He is so pure, who are we? We are nothing. So she advocates our case with Narayana and says, but Narayana, if he looks at us, he says, I know all your previous lifetimes and what you've done and this and that, you have no qualification. <laughs> no, she says, then Mahalakshmi will say, no, 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 that was there, but it was not exactly his fault. That other person did something, but you know, it was not, he was always very nice. In fact, see, he was studying Bhagavatam and all that, all this, uh, you know, I, but see, he's a very good child. Mm. Then Krishna says, okay, fine, you know. So without her, we have no hope. We have no hope. So our uh, Srila Prabhupada's spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, once in Vrindavan, in the outskirts of Vrindavan, there is a very beautiful place called Govardhan. Near Govardhan, there is Shama Kunda and Radha Kunda. So uh, if you go to Radha Kunda and Govardhan, there are people who do a uh, Pradakshina 
Now this pradakshina, we do walking, no? Some people do dandavat pradakshina. Dandavat pradakshina means you pay full obeisances, then they keep a stone there. Then they go to the next spot, then they do a dandavat. They do this around Govardhan. Days, months it takes. Okay. Um, so they do something similar around Radha Kunda, which is a very special place. Radha Kunda is also a very special place, by the way. Mm, this is one particular incident. There is one Asura called as Arishha Asura. Arishha Asura is a demon who comes in the form of a bull, a giant bull. Now everybody runs away and this is in Vrindavan and Krishna sees this bull. Uh, it's there in our Krishna book there. So uh, uh, Krishna kills this demon Arishta Asura. Breaks his horn, punches him, kills him. So this Arishta Asura dies and then all of them are safe and uh, they are happy. Now Krishna is again a hero after killing a, a demon. Now Radharani, they always keep troubling each other. So Radharani also troubles him and uh, Krishna comes and he is about to touch Radharani, small children, both of them. And Radharani says, don't come close to us. And he says, why? He says, you just killed a bull. Killing cow, bull and all that is, uh, you know, you are a Mahapapi now. Krishna says, he is not ordinary bull, he is a, he's a demon. Uh, he, Asura came in the form. I, I don't know all that. You have done a great sin. Now, uh, so Krishna says, okay, now what should I do? He says, she says, you have to go all over the world. Wherever you find any holy water, you have to go and take a dip in all of them and come back. Only then you can talk to me. Till then, don't talk to me. So, Krishna says, wow, I have to go now everywhere, travel, how will I go? So then Krishna says, okay. So Krishna, he calls all the holy rivers. Gangecha, Yamane, Chaiva, Godavari, Saraswati, Narmade, Sindhu, Kaveri, Jale, Smin, Sanidim, Guru. He says, come here and recite. So he creates a kunda, a pond. He says, all of you come here. Then all the rivers come and recite there. So uh, then uh, Krishna goes and takes a dip there. He says, finish. Now I'm done. I'm pure. And Radharani, uh, she says, mm, okay. Then he says, why don't all of you also come and take a dip in all the holy river? She says, no, 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 we are not going to touch that water. So he, he says, why? He says, because you've taken a dip in that. Now all your sins are there in that water. And we touch it, all your sins will come to us. We will not come. Oh, no, all the children in logic, no? Children give logic. <laughs> so she gave that logic. So uh, they said, uh, she said, but we will make our own kunda and we'll dig our own kunda. So they started digging their own kunda with broken mud pot. They were digging and uh, some of the gopis took their glass bangles and they were scratching how much. So what can you do with that? So anyway, they were scratching, scratching, scratching. They did something, created one small hole. That's all they did. And uh, there is another uh, pond called as Manasi Ganga, which is a little away. When you go to Vrindavan, you can go and see that. So from there, which is quite far away. So all these gopis, small girls, they formed a long line and with pots of water. From that, they were passing on the pot of water uh, to one girl to the other and finally coming to this kunda and they were pouring it into the kunda. This would have taken eternity for them to make the kunda. So looking at this Krishna watch for some time, he said, uh, this will never happen. So then he also, he again, he invited all the holy rivers, right? He called all of them. And he said, I want you to especially reside in this Radha Kunda forever. You may reside in my waters or not, but you must reside always in Radha Kunda. So Radha Kunda is very special. So to, even today, when devotees, when we go to Vrindavan, we pay obeisances uh, to Radha Kunda and Shama Kunda. We pay obeisances to Shama Kunda, but you will all see that devotees are always very closely offering extra prayers to Radha Kunda more. We are more attached to Radha Kunda than Shama Kunda. It's a very special place, though both of them are right next to each other. So this Radha Kunda devotees say Dandavat Parikrama of that Radha Kunda alone, because those waters of Radha, Radha Rani, uh, Radha Kunda are non-different from Radha herself. It's, it is said that that is liquid Radha Rani. It's a different form of Radha Rani. It's not different. That's why certain devotees take a dip. Some devotees, it's their personal choice. Some devotees don't even take a dip in Radha Kunda because they're so respectful. They feel that, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm just so filthy, I don't belong there. So we only pay obeisances and, uh, you know, offer our prayers to Radha Kunda. So that is Radha Kunda. So when somebody was paying obeisance once, a great devotee was once paying obeisances, uh, somebody introduced that devotee to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Shri Prabhupada's spiritual master, and said, 
this person is a great devotee and he's done Dandavat Parikram. So uh, he asked him, why did you do this Dandavat Parikram? He said, because uh, if I do this, then Radharani will be pleased with me. And if Radharani is pleased, then she will introduce me to Krishna. So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasil Thakur said, okay, very good. Nice devotee. And he goes away. So his disciple said, what a wonderful devotee. His mood is just like ours. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, no, his mood is not like ours. We don't please Radharani to approach Krishna. He says, we please Krishna to approach Radharani. We go the other way around. Because our goal is to approach Radharani. You see? So that is the original mood. And why do we serve Krishna? We serve Krishna because it pleases Radharani. Of course, it works both ways. But uh, when we serve Krishna, she is pleased. And because she is happy, that's the only way Krishna is happy. And that truly is our only hope. That is why when we chant also, we don't chant Krishna's name first. We chant the name of Hare. Hare is the name of Radharani. Okay, Hara. So, uh, um, Hari, Vishnu's name is Hari. What is the meaning of Hari? Hari, literal translation is lion. That is why uh, Lord Narsimha's name is Nara Hari. Right? Nara, human. Hari, lion. Nara, Hari. So Hari, now why is uh, uh, Vishnu called as Hari? Because he takes away the karma, takes away all the sinful activities that we have performed in many lifetimes. He takes it away just like a lion grabs the life of a deer, of a prey, uh, and it has no hope of living. Just like that, he grabs all our sinful activities and he burns it away. That is why he is called Hari. Uh, but he's also called Hari because he's a great thief, like I told you earlier. Uh, Krishna is the greatest thief. And Radharani is the only one who can steal the heart of that great thief. And because she steals his heart, she's also called as Hara. And a vocative like Radha, when you call out in Sanskrit, Radha, when you call her, it is Radhe. So Hara, when you call, when you ask, when you are calling out to somebody, you say Hare. Hare. That is why we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So in this way, we are calling out to her. We are saying, so the whole Mahamantra is actually a prayer to her, more than Krishna. We are praying to her saying that, O oh, energy of the Lord, O oh, dear Hare, Please engage me in the service of your Krishna. He is not our Krishna. Your Krishna. And she is going to advocate our case in front of Krishna. That is always her mood. She is the greatest of Vaishnavis. And one of the names of Mahalakshmi, Mahalakshmi is Shri. Shri, you know? So why is she called a Shri? The root word of the, of the name Shri comes from Shrunu or um, hearing. Her speciality, her characteristic is hearing. When a devotee speaks, others may hear, may not hear. Krishna may hear, may not hear. But she will always hear. She always hears when a devotee speaks. Even if you don't speak from your mouth, even if you're speaking from your heart, she will hear. If you have an intense desire to serve Krishna or to serve her in any way, she will hear. She's the only one who hears. Very carefully, she listens to every prayer from every heartbeat, uh, every uh, prayer that's emanating from a heartbeat. She hears it. That is why her name is Shri. Shri. And a great way to please her is to also know that just because she is advocating a great case, we shouldn't embarrass her with our bad characteristics. We should also work very hard so that our character is pure. This is called as Sheila. Sheila means characteristic. The Purana has explained what is Sheila, what is character of a person. We can say many things. Huh? So how do you judge a character? Character means in a group of sajjana, of saintly people, of nice, good people, if you are able to openly tell what you have done, any feat that you have performed, if you are able to openly talk about it, that is called Sheila, that is called characteristic. If someone has drunk some alcohol in a group of uh, good people, can you boast about it and say, yes, 
I drank some alcohol, or I did this, I did that. We we won't be able to talk about it, no? Because there's a little bit of guilt, and I shouldn't have done it, but I did it. You know, all that happens. Uh, so, uh, Sheila is very important. Our behavior is very important. Uh, living a very sattvika lifestyle is very important. It is said that Mahalakshmi, she closely, uh, it's a uh, long subject on its own, but just to encourage all of us to perform our sadhana very well, uh, when Mahalakshmi emanated from where? Samudra. Samudra Mantana. When that was happening, Mahalakshmi appeared. And along with, after Mahalakshmi, there was another personality who appeared, who was the sister of Mahalakshmi. Her name is Alakshmi. Right? Alakshmi. So all the, um, uh, anything that inauspicious happens, happens because of a Lakshmi. Okay, so they don't stay together. Whenever there is Mahalakshmi, a Lakshmi is not there. Whenever a Lakshmi comes, Mahalakshmi is not there. So whenever a person does not invite Surya Deva in the morning, when Surya Deva appears fast asleep, a Lakshmi comes. All inauspiciousness comes. A Lakshmi, whenever we think of Lakshmi, we only think of money. Because we see her photo, gold coins falling, we want it to come. Right? So, uh, Mahalakshmi is not only about money. Mahalakshmi is all the good health, all the good thoughts in our mind. Everything comes from Mahalakshmi. If Mahalakshmi is there, we will be healthy, we'll have good consciousness, we'll be able to serve Krishna very well. We'll live a very sattvika lifestyle. If Mahalakshmi is not there, then it's going to be Alakshmi. Alakshmi, with Alakshmi comes uh, unhygienic behavior, not taking bath, hmm, all these kind of behavior. So it's very important that we live a very sattvic lifestyle, take bath, okay? Um, of course, I'm, I'm just reiterating so that you can also tell this to your children. Uh, waking up early in the morning, chanting our rounds, um, changing flowers in your house for the deities, not keeping old flowers and all that. You know, change flowers. Uh, don't use plastic flowers. You know, these are all Kaliuga things we do. Uh, uh, it's okay sometimes, I guess, for decoration outside your door or something, but never for the deities. These are all because of our laziness. Who's going to put flowers every day, so we'll put on plastic flower. Right? I've seen this in so many places. Uh, so this is not nice. Plastic comes from petroleum. It's very tamasic. Very, very tamasic. This is not how it's supposed to be. Hmm? So uh, very important. Wake up early. Keep yourself fresh. Wear fresh clothes always. Uh, it's important not to have torn clothes and all that. You see, in, in our Vedic culture in India, even if torn clothes are there, a poor person who cannot afford new clothes, they would put a patch of some other cloth and they would stitch it, but not a torn cloth. But today we will pay extra money to buy torn jeans. <laughs> Correct? Yeah. Ex extra money. That is, uh, regular jeans is a little cheaper. More pairing than more money, you have to pay a little more extra. Correct? So, <laughs> so these are all forms of Alakshmi. So let us become devotees of Mahalakshmi and devotees of that original Adi Lakshmi, uh, Srimati Radharani, and uh, pray to her so that we may all become wonderful devotees. Sorry I took too much of your time. Um, I hope uh, there's something that we can take back uh, home from our discussion today. Shrimati Radharani Ki Jai Prabhupada Ki Jai Hare Krishna